All right. Uh, our next guest and the guest of honor. We all know everything is done, but there was a point where I style individuals in entertainment. He is here with us. Farhan Akhtar, ladies and gentlemen. So, so quite a few years back, and uh, it's been something which has been festering in your mind for a while. You had an opening scene, which is, I think, the prologue of the book. And uh, so what's been the process from there to here? Oh, wait, I'm going to get my chair. Just one more. Thanks, Ali. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I remember starting off uh, with an idea about maybe four or five years ago. And uh, our good friend and collaborator of many uh, projects and all sorts of things, Somil, and I sort of um, thought we should write a screenplay and you know try and attempt a film on, on this subject. It was, um, it was a bit of a statement we wanted to make. It was highly political. It was highly, uh, well, in, you know, sensitive, I guess, at, at some level. And um, we started writing it as um, a film. We, we got pretty far and then 2014 happened and uh, the government changed and the country changed and somehow we just knew that this film is not going to get made anytime soon. Um, so the only thing, so we kind of abandoned that uh, project at that point. Uh, but it was, I, I felt, you know, in the publishing world we can still get away with a lot because uh, unfortunately or fortunately we don't have too many readers who have too many opinions all the time like the way they have on film and cinema. So I thought, let, let me just go sort of under the radar and still get those ideas out in as clear a manner as possible. And um, so that's why I took Samuel's permission to uh, write a book on it. And he let me have it. And I did. And we're here today. So that was great. Was there any event that has inspired or triggered your curiosity? A particular event that, that comes to you? I think every day there are events in Kashmir. And I think we are all part of it. We are all in it. Kashmir is our problem. People don't, you know, it's very easy to sit away from uh, uh, our country's issues and, and, and speculate. But I, I think it's very immediate. It's right. It's something that's very palpable. So there's not one event, but the more you get into it, the more you read about it and what's happening and, tr and try and see the different points of view. Uh, I, I think anyone with a, any kind of creative streak has something to say about it. Um, I know Farhan did. You made a film called Flash, which was uh, on a similar thing, also about the protagonist kind of coming of age. And uh, so what is it about this issue that you feel you want to put on a film? Um, Right, yeah. Uh, firstly, my apologies for being a little bit late. I got stuck in traffic getting here. And while I was arriving here, I was going to tell Karan that his next thriller should be about a man who needs to go across Mumbai at rush hour time. He has only two hours to defuse a bomb, save his family, do something really, really important. Will he make it? I think is a good I think everyone knows the answer to that is no. <laughs> he will not die because of the it's traffic. A, it's a five-page book. <laughs> Um, well, uh, you know, as far as Laksh is concerned, um, it's uh, something that really as an idea was uh, conceptualized in, in uh, the mind of my father. Um, he had been to uh, Kargil in the year 2001, I think, uh, for Kargil Divas, um, and where you lay a wreath uh, at the memorial that's made there for the fallen soldiers. And while he was there, there was a, um, an officer that he met who uh, spoke to him at length and told him, you know, that there is so much praise for the Indian Army at this point, and people are saying that really we are like the at the pinnacle of courage, the examples for uh, what uh, of nationalism, of pride in our country, of sacrifice for our country. But it's really unfortunate that with all this praise that's coming our way, every single year the number of officers enrolling into the army seem to be becoming less and less. So it's just people are just saying it, but nobody's really following up. You know, and that's when he decided he wanted to write a film 
that would inspire people to join the army and that's how luck started. Um, of course making it was uh, an eye opener for me uh, because there's nobody really from my immediate family <coughs> who has any kind of army background so I had to learn a lot about it and when you learn I mean you realize most importantly um, the serious amount of pride that those people have you know in, uh, in their country, in their people, in uh, their national identity and it doesn't matter where you send them. You know, you could send them to Kashmir, you could send them to different parts of India, you could send them for emergencies, for <coughs> relief work, and they're always there, no questions asked, you know, to, to really serve our, to serve us, you know, so that, so that we have, have more comfortable, easier lives. Um, and that was my biggest learning, really, from it. So it's very different from, from the book, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. a very different experience. But uh, it was truly a lot of learning for me. Uh, about about that region and of course about about the army. So as a writer, you are both uh, prolific writers now. And uh, so, how does your process go about? You know, when you have to write a book, uh, you know, writing a film is a lot of people get involved. There's a a collaboration that happens, but in a book, it's just you alone, kind of just going down with it. So. Please tell us a little about that. Yeah, I mean, I <coughs> I really enjoy writing. That's all, that's my favorite process of filmmaking, also um, amongst so many things that happen in film. Uh, and and one of the most fun things about writing and collaborative writing, especially like in a writer's room sort of setup, is he, it's a lot of physical workout because you end up beating the other guys up for like that one line or that one idea. And there's all you're always wrestling and you are walking out and throwing things and throwing tantrums, so uh, that, that's really fun, and it's, it's for the best. I mean, you just get the best of the ideas sort of uh, filtering through, right? Uh, with the book, it was, I just wanted to try something, so I just, you know, locked myself up in a room for a while, uh, on and off, in between filming or writing other things, and it, it, I just let it um, come together, like the way I wanted it, and I didn't get too many opinions on it, like unlike film where, a lot of people have a say in what you're writing and things um, because it's reaching out to a much larger audience. There's a lot more at stake over there. So I just wanted to do this in my little personal way. This is my thing. I just, you know, um, wanted to get it out. It's incredibly lonely and, uh, well, and, and you're just tearing yourself up and you have a lot of self-doubt sort of creeping in at every moment. I think most, there are lots of writers here, so they, they know what I'm talking about. And, you know, you just, you just have to go with it. Yeah, sorry, but if I may add, you know, I feel like as lonely as the process is physically, you're never really alone, you know, because you're constantly with those, with the characters that you're writing. Right. Um, and like he said, I mean, uh, like you argue with, if you're working with co-writers, you argue and you debate with them. <coughs> Similarly with characters when you're writing, you know, I mean, the same thing happens even, even with that, because at times you'll write stuff and then you come back the next day and, you know, you read a page and you're like, oh, what? yeah, like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know, what's going on? So uh, it's it's interesting, and you be you actually are hardest on yourself in writing. You know when you're directing, which I mean Karan also has done very successfully. When you're directing, the thing is that there's so many other people involved that you actually end up doing the best that you possibly can, given everybody's temperament and given everybody's aesthetic and sense of performance. There's only that much you can do. Right. But when you're writing, you're really really hard on yourself. You know, like the the, the critical factor should really be up there because you only have. Yourself, yourself you know as a judge absolutely as the best judge so the more time you give and the more effort you put and the more you're willing to grapple with those ideas you know and and just really really try to get the best out of what you want it's it's tedious but i mean it's 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 an amazing process when it comes together well. so what's the one thing about his writing style that you really like? so uh, well it's I, I think it's unique, you know, I, I think what, what does set him apart, whether it's the film that he wrote for us, it's the show that he's done, and now this book, um, I, I think what he has, his unique voice, you know, and I think that's the most important thing that you can look for in any kind of creative force. Um, it's very easy to write scripts that are doing the rounds right now, you know, uh, love stories, come on, let's write a love story. Now thrillers are working, chalo, let's write a thriller. Comedies are the flavor of the season, let's get, to, you know what I mean? It's very easy to do that. Good and bad is a separate issue, but it's easier to do it because everyone's doing it. You know, so you can fit in more easily. But if you're choosing to do things 
that are different from what is happening and you know that there is a certain risk involved uh, and when that risk does pay off like i think on a huge level when he they came to us with inside edge you know and and the, the story that they had created it was very risky you know and and we knew that there'll be certain uh, certain feathers that might get ruffled along the process of doing it but um, there was a, a serious belief in the material that he had written and he had a vision for how he wanted to make it um and the writing was something that you don't get to read in, in at least in the indian web series or tv series context so that bravado you know and that unique style i think is definitely his his usp for writing uh, mike's going to go on uh, thanks you, but no it's okay so karan is actually started off as a film script and uh, would you ever like to make a film out of it or would you want to do a series out of it Yeah, right now I'm super disillusioned with the whole film scene. Sorry, but <laughs> it's uh, I just enjoy this whole series thing a lot. It's like why why tell a story in two hours when you have ten hours to develop your characters and they don't even have to go from like a start to an end, you know? And and film all films sort of follow some kind of formula, whether it's like a setup and then you have a crisis coming in, you have a resolution and then you have a climax. So none of that applies in a series. Yeah. yeah and then and then you have to do many things around it like you know like put in songs and things like that not always but if you the bigger the film the more safe i think you have to be with it uh i think with series there's a, there's a lot less pressure and above all i think it's just so much it's easier in terms of how liberating it is without alaj nani sort of looking over your shoulder and okay. and you know even while writing a script you're thinking what will the censor board say about it and just the natural way i think people speak for example you want to capture that you can't do that in film or screen writing i think enough uh so there's a certain template that goes into film making because of many external extraneous factors that should not be there in the first place uh especially with censorship and i think that well so far there's none of that happening so yeah I, so any day i think uh, a book like this would make a very uh, interesting series like in the homeland kind of space Yeah. Which are the shows that are like abroad? Um well, a recent I mean I've been watching many over the years. The one that I've recently watched and I've enjoyed very much is Mind Hunter. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, one I've just just kind of finished the first season watching that. Uh so that's the most recent one, I think. So uh there is no plan <laughs> there's never a plan i smell a franchise <laughs> <laughs> we we have this conversation at the end of every film <laughs> yeah so but you end yourself yeah. like that even yeah well yeah no inside is for sure there's going to be a second season because yeah, we sure. we have we want that too that has a season 2 guys yes. <laughs> officially yeah, it's official now so uh, this maybe maybe never say never I'm just going to say it, okay? Kashmiri Nama's quest is to answer that one question, <laughs> which the citizens of India, Pakistan, and even the world are now grappling to answer. What is the cost of Kashmir? I think, but I don't know. <laughs> All right. All I can say is that you all didn't need to wait for me. You could have started earlier. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So uh, with that, uh, let's unveil the book now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Kind of unveil. Yeah. Unveil the actual book. Okay. Can I have you read for us? Okay. So let's unveil the book. Come.
Okay, Karan, so we're going to ask you, oh, that's the one, that's the copy that we're going to get. The story has, the book has three storylines <coughs> that sort of um, intersect and um, this is one of them. It's about a, a goat herd who, who's a Kashmiri and um, this is from the middle somewhere, but you don't need a backstory, <laughs> it's fine. Javid had taken a state bus and traveled most of the way staring out of the frame of his window at the white vistas streaked by shifting patterns of chinar trees. Like a stain, the polluting, overcrowded bus sputtered on through the thin layer of unsullied snow. The Kashmiris, nestled in layers, rode without any sign of remonstrance. <coughs> Only once were they stopped and made to walk in a single file across an army check post. They were asked to wait unmoving in the, in, in the open as snowflakes collected on their shoulders. The bus was swept for subversive activity. As victimized Javid felt during such episodes of harassment, this journey with his fellow travelers was always an odd comfort for them. The bus wound its way to the town where Javed had a few buyers for his produce. There was rampant construction going on, the air burdened with dust and cement. He sought out his destination, a dairy shop in the main market run by an old enterprising Punjabi businessman. Gulshan Singh had come on his honeymoon in the 70s and, uh, and, uh, and astonished by the sheer beauty of Kashmir, had stayed back and set up shop in Baramulla. Until the late 1980s, his luck was flourishing. He had a network of stores across Kashmir but the rise of militancy had, deci had decimated his business to a single outlet. Javid was turning the corner when he spotted his son's older friend Shokat smoking at a tea stall. Their eyes met. Shokat stood up in a reflex action of respect and threw down his cigarette. Javid smiled and indicated for him to wait, that he would see him in five minutes. Shokat nodded and sat down with his two companions, who Javid recognized as teachers from a local madrasa. Gulshan Singh greeted his goat milk supplier with tired eyes and a raspy voice. The variety of his turban, one, uh, <clears throat> the variety of his turbans, one hue of the rainbow for each day of the week in his early years, were now restricted to gloomy shades. His shop had remained unchanged for two decades. The stainless steel containers for milk and the large brass trays for curd were as shiny as always, but his walls had decayed at a pace invisible to him and his regular customers, much like his smile that was now stockaded by wrinkles. Javid Sahib, you've been missing. I, have, I haven't seen you since Friday, 40 years, and he hadn't lost his accent. Kura, my son, he's not well. And Javid brought out his produce. He didn't need to vocalize the rest of the thought. It was self-explanatory in, in the amount he had to proffer. Gushan Singh look, looked up with surprise. This is it? For this week, yes. I need to keep some in stock for Kura. But this will hardly be enough for three, maybe four customers. The shopkeeper weighed the milk and transferred the contents to his drum. Then he took out his creaking, rusting money box and rummaged in it for some currency and coins. Javed acted as if he trusted the amount he pocketed, but attempted a quick mental calculation. It was less than 100 rupees. Javed Bhai, I hope we can have more next time. Yes, yes. Javed's expression betrayed him. Gulshan Singh regretted his reproach. 
At the tea stall, an unpainted brick hole in the wall, Shaukat waited for his friend's father on the only bench available. When he spotted him, he reached over and picked up two steaming cups of cups from the counter. Javed gratefully accepted it and took a seat. He looked around. The stall owner had his nose buried in the Urdu newspaper as a folk program played on the radio. There, there were no other patrons. How is Kuram Chacha? The fever comes and goes. Do you have enough medicines? If you want, I can ask the Hakim to... No, Shaukat, I'll manage. Yes, Chacha. I want to tell you something. Once again, Javed scanned for flies on the wall. Listen, Shaukat, I overheard the conversation last evening. Without missing a beat, Shaukat nodded. It was tragic. The army bastard. I'm, I'm sure he wasn't. You know that's not what I'm referring to, Javed was stern now, losing patience. Asking him to make himself useful and whatnot. Now listen to me, Shaukat, listen carefully. I never ever want you near my son talking about such things, about taking this path. In fact, it would be best if you stayed away from him entirely. He paused. Shaukat had that look of defiance that he had seen on the faces of so many Kashmiri teens in the last 30 years. I want him to have a good education. I want him to make something of his life, get out of that village, go into the world, become a man with, with, with a legacy. You must understand this is my dream, like every other parent. I cannot have him join your cause, a cause he doesn't even understand yet. I don't want him to throw stones at an enemy that will crush him with their might. We don't want him to throw stones. We are past that, point, we are past that point in our fight now. There's glory and money in what we, what we are asking of him. And as for not understanding, with all due respect, Chacha, that is on you. Javed ignored the accusation. He did not need this upstart to explain to him how to raise his son. If Shaukat was looking for intent in the man, he was going to get it. Now, said Javed, treading with care. Keep Kuram out of this. Tell me everything. I want to volunteer for whatever it is that you're planning with your friends. So that was one chapter. Is that enough? Actually, this is one of the slower chapters. Like the rest of it is a lot of action, and you know, it's more fun to read than to have me say all that. All right. So, uh, can I please have a seat? Now we're going to open uh, the forum to the audience and to the media. Uh, can we please stick to questions about the book? Book-related questions. I've been requested to announce that. So, and I trust we have some wonderful people here. So. Far away, guys, uh, for Anand Karan, uh, are right here. Does anyone want to ask a question? We have a few plants in the audience, don't worry. Oh, Samil, yeah, he was our first one. Yeah, okay, right. there we go. Thank you. Um, any part of the book that was your favorite that you enjoyed writing the most? Um, I really like writing um, the bits which, um, which, which were my thoughts on what's going on and what the issues are and and then actually sort of uh, building them up as a, like an expose which i feel is because of all the propaganda that we have going on that people don't know enough of and i just wanted to put that stuff in as clear a manner as possible and bring that out and that that was for me and and use the you know the best metaphors that i could find for it so for me that was really the fun part the best part. Right. Oh. Karan's dad is here. He would like to ask you something. Okay, <laughs> yes, he's right here. <laughs> He'd like to ask you something. Right. Okay. okay, so uh, <laughs> what was the process? What was the most difficult part in writing this? I'm pretty sure it was finding the time, I think, is was the tough toughest part of writing and um, I had a lot of time for a, for a long time <laughs> and suddenly it's all happening together so it's, it's a big premium right now I mean I'd love to have watched Mindhunters but I haven't been able to even get to Netflix this year <coughs> uh, I'm Karan's uncle <laughs> elder brother of you Mandu. guys look similar yeah that's right <laughs> so within a year Karan a movie, a tele series, and a web series, and uh, of course a novel. Three of the best genres of creative output that one can imagine. What next? 
nothing <laughs> it's just some more of the same but of course it all didn't happen in one year i mean there's a process it takes, it takes a long time to actually for all, for it to come together i mean the writing has been on for a couple of years on and off the series took about a year to write and then a year to make it uh films it take a lifetime i think chalo we are proud of you yeah come on thank you all right we have a question oh we have a lot of questions okay Hi, Kay. Hi. Uh, not that I've read the book, but I just wanted to say, after you completed the book, was it some kind of a catharsis? What, what was the feeling? I really haven't had time to reflect on that yet, so I'm just sort of soaking it up right now. It is great to have finished writing a book. It's always been my childhood dream to do that. Like, like I have been trying to write and abandoned hundreds of books, even if there were a few lines to begin with. Uh, so. it's it is a big moment for me personally yes more than i think making a film okay thank you auntie you want to say something okay sorry auntie doesn't want to say anything okay there's rishi here okay so i believe we were just talking earlier you were telling me how you spent some time in kashmir um is there something you'd like to share that you experienced there that the rest of us probably never will you know having spent the time there the uh, inside edge so to speak well uh when when i was researching the book and i was in kashmir i met lots of interesting people like uh besides the usual uh thing of interacting with 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 the common folk and uh, hanging out with them as much as possible i also try to break into the upper echelons of political circles and you know uh, people who are connected with uh the politics of it and who sort of have run the state so to speak like and and that was amazing for me like that that's like I, i you know we kept at it kept at it like i went with a colleague and you know just trying to get information uh out of them in a subtle manner and and then finally like we we spent a couple of weeks and finally at the end of it it all sort of came pouring out one evening and that really forms the core of what the philosophy is of the book which is which is like the expose i was talking about in a sense where i just feel that anyway so um there were those many things we learned in that journey like the kind of corruption that goes on and 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 the levels of that that we are you know it's much worse uh writing the writing is is still going on uh but it'll start very soon they are currently busy with another series as we speak to pehle wo ho jaye and uh, but it's in the wings it is being prepared so i mean i would imagine at some point next year that they will will start filming that yeah is book pe inhone khud film nahi banaya aap mujhse puch rahe hain ki main film banana chahunga ha agar mauka mile lekin ye bilkul sahi kaha unhone ki matlab jo is waqt jo ek azadi hai creatively ki aap web series pe bana sakte hain cheeze wo is waqt film mein unfortunately nahi hai aur bilkul sahi kaha ki aisa hona nahi chahiye kyunki ek acha rating system hona chahiye logo ko lagna chahiye ki what kind of audience is suitable to watch a particular kind of film तो होपफुली जब वैसा एक माहौल क्रिएट हो देन पीपल विल बी वेरी एनकरेज टू मेक मोर एंड मोर स्टोरीज एंड टेल स्टोरीज दैट आर हैव मोर करेज आर मोर आर मोर ब्रेव सो आई डू कम्प्लीटली अग्री विद हिम अबाउट दिस और अगर ऐसा ही वक्त है तो मैं क्या मतलब खुद बनाएंगे होपफुली आई बी प्रोड्यूसिंग इट फॉर या आई मीन टेक अ नियर सॉरी लाइक अ नियर फिक्शनल कैरेक्टर लाइक पदमावती एंड काइंड ऑफ कंट्रोवर्सी दैट्स हैपनिंग अराउंड इट व्हिच इज सच अ नॉन कंट्रोवर्सी इट्स नथिंग इट्स जस्ट लाइक what's the big deal about something like this and look at look at what's happening around us for something that happened 1000 years ago what will happen if we go and get into a like a controversial thing about a current subject uh sir like you spoke about it what is your view point about the controversy that's happening about the 
I've I've said this. This is not about just those two films or just about the film that you mentioned. This has happened in the past with many films, and every single time it's happened. I mean, we I have spoken up very openly and said that it should not. Uh, I'm totally against anything being banned. Um, there are films that are banned. Even people who ban the films that you are talking about protest that those why are these films being banned? So it's just like a tit for tat banning that's going on. <coughs> but um, I genuinely believe, and I have always believed that. we should stop treating our audiences as children you know we should allow them to grow we should allow them to be exposed to different kind of ideas to counter cultures to counter thinking uh, it's very important for the development of any nation you know for there to be viewpoints that are not always agreeable by a majority uh, and the majority because you are in cinema there is no such law that exists where if a film releases come what may you have to go and see it there is no such law you have the freedom to boycott the film you have a freedom to spread messages to tell people to boycott the film but what you don't have is to threaten you don't have the freedom to go and threaten somebody with grievous bodily harm or break somebody's theater or cause damage in any kind of way to anyone and that's where unfortunately the line has not been drawn very very clearly enough <clears throat> we as the film industry are dependent on the cbfc to tell us what is okay and what is not we've accepted that beyond that once it has been cleared by that board i think it is up to then the the government the inb ministry and the government to to protect your film and to protect the filmmakers that's what i've always felt and that's what i feel in, even about these films oh, uh, you branched out in your know, direction acting you know producing will you i would like you to ask him a question no, 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 this, this is fun will you as an author will you be as an author um i i don't have any such plans yet of of writing a book like he said he's grown up with this fantasy of wanting to write a book a dream of fantasy no dream of writing a book and it's he's fulfilled it hopefully there'll be many more to follow this because it usually happens when you manage to do one you somehow find the impetus to do it more and more um my dream always had been to to make films you know and to to be a part of the film world um and i'm i'm thoroughly grateful and and fortunate for things that have come my way in that so no to answer your question now uh yeah oh sorry we fight we protest we not take that lying down and we stand up for our creative rights see it has happened in the past there have been films that have been banned the filmmakers have taken it to a tribunal where then it has been cleared it has happened it may be painful it may take time but it it will happen you know so i mean eventually it's important i feel again for film fraternity to come together on these issues stand together on these issues unfortunately we have also ourselves to blame we should not only keep pointing fingers at other people there's been a lack of unity when it comes to these things everyone gets scared when it's their film on the line you know and that's very very unfortunate because we are working it's a very small industry if you think about it there's not that many people you know so if they don't come together to create an environment where they themselves can function the way that they would like to nobody else is going to do it for them so karan has a few school friends in the audience which uh, oh okay uh, he's been trying to right oh okay okay come come please speak yeah I wouldn't call it a no man's land way, but the idea is to try and explore things from different points of view and how I interpret them. So when when you have a Kashmiri goatherd on one hand and what their life is, what he's sort of going through, but of course it's all dramatized and a lot of it is my imagination. Um, there's also a soldier and his his point of view of how things are, uh, how you know there. It's a different kind of indoctrination that happens. with the army so it's their points of view clashing and uh, and how they sort of change and they sort of reach a, a, a common space so that's the story in a sense so is, is there a clear stand what well i th- there is, i have a clear stand that comes out somewhere but it's not like spelled out you'll have to sort of find it that's great yeah okay current uh, we have a uh, can school friend Hi, I'm from Jamnabin Nude, and I wanted to ask. 
I shouldn't have given it. <laughs> so I get right back. Uh, why is the book being launched today? I mean, being Children's Day, is it related it's to something about uh, you know how we treat our audiences <laughs> like children? <laughs> <laughs> so let's just release a controversial, nice, you know, talking point of a book today. Uh, no special reason. Uh, children are amazing. My, <laughs> I've dedicated the book to my daughter. She's um, there's a good there's a reason if if you want one. Okay, so this is actually a question because I follow you uh, on Instagram. Um, you went to Cuba. Was that somewhere you actually, was that your writing space or creative space or something? No, it was my only break that year. <laughs> but you know what? There's so many things about Cuba that were amazing uh, now that you brought it up. Like it's on the whole censorship thing. It's supposed to be one of those countries where the world is sort of running on the American propaganda about Cuba and what they, uh, how, how the citizens are being, you know, uh, there's so many restrictions on, on news and media and all of that and, and the whole uh, socialist take on things. But Cuba is nothing like that. It's, it, it's a fantastic place. It's got everyone is literate. There is zero crime. It, it's not. And, and I just find that there's a lot more freedom, not only of expression, but also just in their personal lifestyle of people, much more than India has. So it's. It's, it's, it was a real eye opener for trip oh. that way. Okay, one last question. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. Karan, uh, you said that you spent time in Kashmir. So, uh, did you did you learn about stories of human rights violations, which have, I mean, time and again, you know, come. Up, I mean, they have been reported because of army. So, what was what's your perspective on that? There's a lot of that uh, perspective in the book. So, I'm just gonna let you guys get a copy and find out. Okay. Uh, there's a very special person in the audience, which uh, I'm sure he wants to ask you something or say something. Said Saab, I have to give you the mic to just, you know, you are our number one plant. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Okay, I'm the number one plant. Now, I've read your book and I just want to say that besides the questions, you know, we're asking a very good, a very important question, but I just found your book a, an act of immense courage. And I really say that because you have taken on an issue which given its circumstance can be, you know, can take on all kinds of emotional hues and, you know, uh, can become jingoistic, can become, you know, all kinds of things. And, and you have actually plunged into it in a, in a manner which I think is incredibly well done. And to me it's an act of courage because the people who read this book, I think a questioning process will start in their mind, which is also very, very important. And as you mentioned earlier, it can't be made into a film right now under these circumstances. But as a book, well, really, it's an act of courage. And Paran, your statement, well done, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so, uh, Mate, Ale, yeah, I just want to say something. Uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Said Saad's immense contribution in in every in in all aspects of my life, especially about my philosophy of of, of uh, and take on things. He's been a true mentor throughout, and and he's he's someone I absolutely have always looked up to. Um, thank you so much. And it's because of people like you and Dad and, and Farhan who have been supportive in so many ways of, of, of ideas that are not the norm of trying to, you know, s s ruffle some feathers, stir up some things that, that I am what I am. So thanks, guys. Okay, we have a very special lady in the house who would like to just say a couple of words. Are you Anuradha? Where's your daughter? <laughs> Anuradha is Karan's wife. She's here. Where is Zoe? Because... Uh, the book actually starts with a, it's for Zoe, yeah. right? So, Zoe, what is this? <laughs> okay, Alec. Right, okay, yeah. So pressurizing. Well, not bad, yeah. I tried. Okay, so uh, we're going to wind this up. I just have this one little incident that I want to say, which uh, you told me last night. The year was 2001 when uh, Lagan happened to the world and... And Dil Chata also happened to the world and there was this one award function that you were at and you just won an award and uh, Karan would never do something like that. I've known him for, for donkey's years but uh, he had actually come up to you and he had told you that, uh, you know Farhan, this for me is the movie of the year and this is going to genuinely change things for the entire industry. So congratulations and like well done and uh, do you remember any of that? All right, okay, okay, doesn't, but yeah, but that happened, but I wanted to say that to you. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have uh, we have Mr. 
one last thing which which one you do ma'am please the uh, oh there's one more question okay last last come hi karan uh, i'm from jnk only i uh, just wanted to curious about this that you have been in kashmir and uh, i just want to know uh, what you have experienced which i have never heard before mm. and wanted to put in this book but couldn't put in this book I mean, all the fun stuff is not there in the book. That no, but uh, ex- <laughs> apart from that, I mean, which uh, you really wanted but couldn't. That uh, no, there was. I didn't hold myself book. back at all. So it's all there. Okay. Yeah. So okay. please go for it. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Rina, um, am I going to ask you? The last, uh, even you have. You have one more question. Are from the editorial. Oh, okay, from the editorial. Hi, Karan. Why uh, fact and fiction? Why not just fiction? Yeah, I I think uh, uh, facts are great, and but they just everyone knows what happened. Like so, my opening chapter, for example, is it has um, Hari Singh signing over Kashmir to India in what is a two-page document. It's amazing this document. If you guys haven't seen it, it's just like typewritten with uh, two pages, and it says I, and there's a dash. It's like Hari Singh Maharaja so and so. Uh, hereby, um, sort of give away dash J N K to dash India as opposed to Pakistan, and and that's it. That's all that we have going um, as, as um, whatever a legitimacy of over Kashmir in that sense. Like so, um, and when that signing happened with B P men in there, uh, who, who was the one man instrumental in going to all the princely states and convincing their leaders to. Uh, and over uh, that that bits to india um he was there and that's recorded history but you know the all, all of this all of these things have loopholes like you don't know where who was at that point so i just put in like nehru what if he went and what if that never got to put because he wanted to make sure that his home state you know comes to india and, and i fully dramatized and sort of fictionalized what might have transpired no one really knows right um that is the norm now i think all biopics or anything sort of coming out uh, it, there is that whole dramatization uh, it just makes things more interesting and lively but you know i, I didn't feel the need to stick to like a uh, very fact based sort of narrative but yeah i mean obviously you don't go crazy you don't paint uh, a picture that was completely untrue okay uh, so rina yeah let's go close it up for us yeah, yeah. so time for gifts I uh, request Vijay Thakur from our team to felicitate our guests. Thank you, Mr. Rakhtar. It's an honor to have you with us. Karan, thank you for writing a courageous book. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Alif. Uh, you've been a wonderful audience, and we thank you for being with us today. Karan is going to be present at the bookshop and he's going to personally sign the copies and it's the right time to grab them right after Alif finishes. Thank you very much for being with us today. Refreshments will be served shortly. So, thank you very much. Uh that was lovely. Thank you Farhan for being here. Let's and just Karan.